So I has to be explained up right now. Right. So see what I does gives you uh, identity matrix of everything, right? Like if you write whatever the number you write over there, like three, five, something. So in the diagonal, that the number you write three or five, the diagonal numbers five or three, whatever you write will be one, and the rest apart from the diagonal will be zero. That's it. How an identity matrix if I like. So if I say uh, important number yeah if i say np dot and i for anything let's say for five for eight seven so the seven would be a diagonal the seven ones would be a diagonal and the rest will be a zero this being the thing np dot i of two one one zero zero it's better right easy yeah. okay and let me put on charge that's better. Hmm. so this is like the working of an i so the last i think we did from this all would be empty or something full right that would be the last one what we did okay now we are not like working with ranges in the numpy like if we work why why we prefer numpy over the list right why we prefer this up so oh, today we'll see on uh, they will see on a comparison between the numpy arrays and the lists. So why we prefer the numpy arrays over the list? The reason is like uh, we have two major factors because numpy arrays are very much faster as compared to list and the second is numpy arrays consume a very less space as compared to the list. Now let's see how. We'll see here. Right? So uh, let's say that if you have a range of elements. Okay, someone is there. Hmm. Okay. Right. So uh, the very first reason is to choose this numpy array because this occupies very less memory as compared to the list, right? So then it's very pretty fast in terms of execution with the very same time. It is very convenient to work in the numpy, like with the list you can see on, right? So major advantages are there. Okay. So let's see with the time how it is important. Okay. So let's import two modules time and the system. Now let's say that I have a range of uh, some thousand numbers. Okay. And I say that I want to get the size of, right? So one function over there for this is. So get size of like uh, C. In a list of numbers for integers, what is the size of integers in bit? Anyone knows? By default, what's the size? Two. Two? Okay, one second. Have you done this? Twenty eight bytes. What is the size? What will be the size of two hundred? Guesses, guesses, quick, 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 quick. What will be the size of two hundred? It is also twenty. See. <laughs> You guys are confused. You we are thinking that the size of two is twenty-eight. 
then 200 numbers size would be what? I'm not asking about the 200 numbers. I'm just asking what will be the size of the number 200. It is also an integer. So obviously it will also get a size of 28, right? The integer has got the size of 28. Something is uh, another for the float, something is another for the complex, right? So that being changed, right? I'm not talking about 200 numbers. This is a number, just 200 number. It could be 201, 202, 203, any number, numeric number, right? So th this is not a list of 200 numbers. This is a number 200, that's it, okay? Right, got it? So for the size of 2, let, uh, whether it is 2 lakh to something, it is going to be 28 because this is an integer. And size of an integer in the system is 28 bytes. That's it. Okay. Clear? In doubts? So if I'm taking from the thousand, if I'm taking just a number, two, anything, three, four, five, six, you can take any number, right? Even one, zero. So if I'm taking one number and if I'm multiplying it with the length of total numbers in the S, then I'm, to, uh, I'm going to get the total size of this, right? So total size of this thousand numbers, I'm going to get it there, isn't it? Correct or not? Any confusions? No, sir. Yeah. Now, if I say D is equals to, now in this case, I'm talking about like in the numpy, we say not a range, right? We say arrange, arrange. Why arrange? Because this is array's range, right? This is not range, this is array's range. So we take A and then range, okay? So same we are going, taking a numpy range of 1000, okay, and doing the same thing, but in this case, we have size, we have size, you know, we have size, size, like this, uh, item size we have data, right, have I written, yeah, so size we have written, so what size gives you, total number of elements, right, what a numpy size give you total number of elements in the numpy and then if i multiply it with the item size so what item size gives the individual size of an element or individual size of an item inside uh, any kind of an array right so individual size multiplied by the total number of size that's it like here also the individual size multiplied by the total number of things will be giving the results Right? Okay, that's it. easy. Any questions? Any doubts anyone having? No? Alright. So, see the results. So, the list is storing 28,000 bytes. And where the numpy is storing 8,000 bytes. It's been 7, 000, sorry, 7 times larger. You can see the comparison with the storage this is storing 28,000 and the list is with the 8,000 so I should write here something <laughs> list storage equals to comma numpy array storage equals to uh, so let's bring the thing list is having 28,000 and b array is having 8,000 so the, the very first comparison, right? Next. Let's try say that these are very much efficient with the time. And with the time now, uh, in this case, you would better need some, you know, how time module works. Okay, we'll deal up with later onwards, right? Because time module has to be explained to you first of all. Okay. So before we time, like uh, let's talk about like how arrange works. What are the process in the arrange and all? Like what what are the things parameters and all? So in the arrange, we just make arrange of elements over there as such. Like what 
so a range is not like such different thing apart from the range whatever you work in the range that is very much easy and very much same with the range working if you say the numbers from 1 to 10 that's it like 1 to 9 right if you say a range of numbers from 1 to 10 like a range of numbers from 1 to 10 with the intervals of 2 that's it same things 1 3 5 7 9 So here you can also write start, stop, and and all. For more details, hmm. for more details, what you can do? Np dot info. Getting the np dot. Okay. Results. There we have length space, m grid, mesh grid, right? And a lot of things are there. So start, stop, data types, and all parameters are there. Four parameters to get the results. Okay. Right. Next. This is one function arrange. Right. So data type you can write up there, and then you can get the item size for all the things. Okay. As per the space. Next we have uh, have length space. Now what is length space? This function is very similar to the working of an arrange, right? But it gives you an evenly spaced numbers between some values. Even or you can say an evenly spaced values between some numbers, right? Let's say that uh, like if you come back to your class seventh or class eighth, you would have done uh, find. Five numbers, six numbers between two irrational number between two something like, yeah, you might have done all those things. Right, so find up some numbers between these numbers over there. Same things right over. Let's say if I'm having a number x and y, okay, and this is like two and four. If I say you to find hundred numbers between two and four with the equal steppings, equal stepping, you know, with the equal intervals. Like if we are going 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, something like that in the equal intervals, hundred numbers. Even if I can say you thousand numbers, ten thousand numbers, right? So what process you are going to find? What what you are going to find the intervals? How you are going to find the intervals? That is like one such uh, process we say, you know. I will be writing an equation. You will identify. Remember this equation. Let it something. T equals to a plus n minus one into d. Which equation it is? Oh, <laughs> which equation it is? Arithmetic progressions. Getting there or not? Yes, sir. So, what is that D? Common difference. difference. So, if I say to find the number exact intervals, like with a common difference of all those things, right? So, with two to four, you want to have, like, you mean to have hundred numbers. You can get the common difference with the, like, you know, a starting that is two. You know, the n also number of things that is hundred. And even though the last number, you can easily go to get the D, right? That's being the thing. Okay. Let's remove this. Yeah. So here, uh, instead of going with all that mathematical things, we have such like one function that is called a linear space, linear spacings. So we write np dot linear space. So you can write your start, stop, and all. I don't know. I'm not going to write up all those things, right? So starting is two. 
swapping this for and you want 100 numbers that's it done that's the results so there is a result number is starting from 2 array array is starting from 2 ending at 4 with 100 numbers maybe if you go to count the size 100 see okay there is also there so it is going with uh, equal spacing but what is the equal spacing what is that common difference so are you going to subtract the things first minus the second and like that you going to go like this first is this minus the zero of that So this could be the like the results and all. Okay. So what you can do is just you can write the red step to be true. And this is your after the output you get something like this, which is the same like not exactly but yeah I think that's we zero to zero to zero to <laughs> and the intervals like last it is three three two and here it is. 0 to 4, something like exactly not same but approximately with that, right? Because everything will not give the same result as respective things, okay? Alright, so what is red step means? Any guesses? That is basically the return step. So if you want to return the stepping value, that is interval value, you can write true, and if you don't want the stepping value or the uh, interval value you can just write over that or you can just uh, miss that right that's an optional one if you want you can write true false to get the respective results if you don't want you can just skip over that part to just get the results over there right and by default if you don't write any number like 100 or something like this right so by default if you don't write any number you will get 50 samples for that np dot length space let's say from 0 to 0 0.1 so from 0, 0.0 to 0 0.1 how many numbers will be getting up 50 numbers sample 50 numbers so these are the intervals going up even 0 0.00 to 0. 0. 0.000001 so you get the 50 numbers even here right but that will be obviously exponential numbers over there Let's remove something to get the results and sitting 0 1 4.0001 results are here. Okay, so that can be worked up to find out the things, right? So, what are the parameters? One is the start, next is the stop, and third is the num, and then you have the red step, and one more parameter there that is endpoint right so you write np dot length space start equals 4 stop equals 5 just like writing up the things okay and number of samples to be 5 endpoint oh let's say true uh, let's say the returning one to be true what do you have got the results respectively right as expected but what if i write the end point to be false what the result is still going with the number 4 but ending at 4.8 you see up there right it is ending with 4.8 not with 5 
So what end point does? It stop the sequence or stop the progression or stop the series before the uh, before the stop number, right? So stop number will not be included. You know, the stop number will not be included, and then it goes to give you the results respectively. Okay, if you write true. If you don't write true, obviously again we get the expected results as same, right? But if you write false over there, then it is not going to give you the results with the stopping number. Okay. All right. Uh, same things can be done with the numbers even. Okay, with the small numbers, like when you go with like uh, good numbers over there, 10, 200, 15, 45, and um, <clears> all. <throat> Sorry. Okay. Uh, NP NumPy slicing indexing is one of the major thing. You know, like till now how you have been slicing up for any array. Let's say A equals. For any area, like let's say if this is 0, 1, 2, 3 for something like that, till 20, right? What do you do? A of 5, A of 4, oh, sorry, separately you have to do it there. Like this, A of 5, A of 4, like that, right? Slicing with that. But what if I say that? A of, you know, slice of 5, what do you get, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, what that means, yes, can you uh, define it, like what that means, the array is the index value of 5, Mm. Don't just break it till there. Yeah, so the array till the 5. Okay, that's nice. So if I say s is equals to slice, yeah, okay. What is going to get the results? What will be the results there? Three, five, seven. Mm -hmm. One you have missed. One, three, five, seven. See, you are slicing one to eight with the intervals of two, not with the 0 slicing with 1 to 8 1 to 8 with the intervals of 2 so 1 will come first then 3 then 5 then 7 okay this has been the thing so slice can also be done like that like this like with the slice otherwise you can just go a of this 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 and that will be done okay like not with the being the commas, you can just write here 1 is to 8 is to 2, the results are there 1, 3, 5, 7. Okay, so starting, stopping, and all rest of things remains the same from end to end, and all those things are easy. Oh, this is that array. So now let's say if it's 10, 12, let's make a 2D array, 20, 14. Okay, 16. Okay. And my y is the x of 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 
0. Can you let me know what will be the output x and y? Let's talk about what will the output of y. Any guesses? Mm-hmm. What could be the output? Like x is 10, 12, 20, 14, 30, 16. And I'm going to write x of 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 0. So the results would be See, x of 0, 1, 2 giving a comma and then again writing 0, 1, 0 means x of 0 of 0, then 1 of 1, then 2 of 0. That's be, that will be the result. Isn't it? 10. 10, yes. 10. 20. 20. Uh, okay. No, 10, 14 and 30. Yeah, 10, 14 and 30 would be the answer. Like because x of first will be the 0 giving a comma that means 0 of 0 it's 10 if you see 0 this is complete 0 and 0 of 0 10 0 of 1 20, uh, sorry 14 0 of 2 of 0 this is the 2 0 1 and 2 2 of 0 is 30 and that's the results okay okay again that could be done as zero is to one is to two getting the results as 10 and 12 and that will be done right So, uh, taking the rows and the columns, What would be the result if I write rows of columns? Uh, okay, fine, fine, fine. One second. out of bound okay If I say x of rows or columns, yeah. Now, what could be the output? Yeah, 
Yes. Easy, right? The same question. Only thing is that I have changed the way of writing. Instead of writing the numbers, I am just writing rows and columns. Is it one one? No. Okay, I'm I'm getting the results for you to identify the pattern. One second. Get the pattern. Right. See how rows and columns are being given. Zero zero three three zero zero uh, zero two one zero two, right? How you are going to solve? Zero of zero, zero of two, three of zero, three of two. Zero of zero. From here, zero of zero. Zero of two, three of zero, three of two. So zero of zero. Okay, I have to write up. You can just guess from here. Zero of zero. What will be the x of zero first of all? Zero one two. So zero of zero is zero. Okay. Then zero of two. What is zero of two? Zero one two. That's two. So zero of yeah. zero. Zero of two. Zero and two there. Next is three of zero and three of two. So what is zero? X of three. This is the so three of zero is ten. Ten is there. Three of two is twelve. Twelve is there. Understood? Any confusions? Errors are very important. Confusions might be there. It's not easy. Having doubts? How many are having doubts? No one. Okay. Nice. He was having a quite good doubts. Okay. Next. All right. Now, uh, going to begin up with the NAND, null values. I think that is mostly used in the data science world. N A N, not a number. This is not having any data type. See, two, three, four, nine, five, six, nine, five, fifty, sixty. What is that exactly? That's not a number. If you say print x multiplied by five, see, fifteen. Very everything would be getting multiplied, but the nan remains a nan because that is not a number. Not a number means that there is nothing, not even zero. That's a blank space. What if we say x 
dot size. 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, size it occupies. That's not matter. But that is not. And that will relay you in the pandas. There you will be better understanding what exactly is a NAN thing. Right? One minute. One minute, please. Yeah, so uh, see, if I have to look on that how many NAND values are there, how I am going to look on? Let's say if this is a list. See, if you go for going to type of x is an array, right? But if I say type of np dot NAND, you get a float. You get a float. You give me a reason why it is float. Even when it is not a number, try to find that to get it soon after you complete the number. Okay, fine. See, so now we are going to get like, uh, like to search on that if there consists, you know, that one sign what we we used like in the previous part, I guess, right? That is going to use right now. So, like, if we want to see that. Is there any uh, NAND value? So if it is there, how many NAND values are there? Right. So how we can get it? Just we have to print in the X. We are going to look on that NP dot is NAND X. Is there any NAND values in the X? That's it. NP dot is NAND. So is there any NAND values in the X? So in the x we have to look on np dot is than of x. Okay. So that's it there. Two nan values are there. Okay. One second. Two NAND values are there, right? But if we want to see on uh, uh, apart from NAND, how many values are there? And not with the NAND, how many values are there? So there we are going to use print x and p dot is NAND of x and then we Oh, what is this? Oh, oh we have used this outside should be inside results. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 15, 16. These are the uh, uh, values which have the actual values, right? These are not NAND. Okay. So these have the values. And the rest are the NAND. 2, right? So you can get it easily. So or not only with the NAND, you can go with the complex, you can go with every other things, right? Like if you are having a complex number, an array of a complex thing. Let's say if you are having a complex number, okay? Want to see how many complex number, like what exactly the complex number are here? What you can do is, you can go on for writing. That in the y, y dot is complex of y. Oh, what is that? Oh, that is np. So these are the complex numbers 0 plus 2j, 0 plus 66, 67j and all those things. 0 plus 2j, 0 plus 67j and 3.5j. These are the complex ones. Print looks better. Okay. So that's been the thing.
but if we don't want to see if there consists a number which is float also integer also complex also so if you don't want to look on the complex and also not want to look on the float like uh, it easily apply negations on that and that would work better so apart from complex if you don't want to see the complex right you can go for that too giving in the results specifically so these are the three four five six and all right the uh, why these also look on to be a complex right why so let's see the array the difference between an array and a list here in the numpy array is that in a list it, it can hold multi uh, type of data right that is like multi data type it can hold it can be a float it can be you have seen right in the list we can write a string an integer a float a complex a set even a dictionary right a list can hold everything even the duplicate the array can also hold duplicate but the thing is like array should be a homogeneous structure right homogeneous data type if it is complex it should be complex totally complex if it is a uh, float it should be totally float okay like that like see if you say an array np dot an array see only one float i have given the rest automatically becomes a float so that's like one of the important thing to be focused on right the rest mathematical calculation parts is said to be broadcasting now what is broadcasting in numpy we say the ability in numpy we say it has the ability of uh, uh, numpy arrays to like the ability of numpy we can say on to treat the arrays of uh, like different shapes during the arithmetic operations that can be said like like broadcasting okay if we have an array x and y for now right if i say x multiplied by y uh, okay shapes are not same fine So multiplication ten forty nine e sixty correct right multiplications can be done additions can be done with any dimension you know mathematical things what we were talking about like all the mathematical operators you can do in there okay you can even write x dot okay is it changed yeah. how is that so mathematical things you can do up there now so uh, if there is an a which is not one dimension obviously like which is like two dimensional three dimensional or any n dimensional and you want it to be printed as one dimensional let's say like x is having one dimensional array right so if i say for i in x print x print i sorry That is one, two, three, four, individual elements of the array, right? So, uh, but what if I say a 
what is that a having any value okay that is 90 total elements 20 okay so let's reshape as a 2 that's 10 So now it becomes a 2D array, right? With uh, two rows, 10 columns. So now in this case, if I say for x in a, print a, x, here see, it will be getting zero and all, like exactly what are the things? The numbers, the two numbers, what we have in the a. So you are getting the same uh, alignment for that, right? Not the individual numbers. So for getting the individual numbers, you will have to apply one function that is called as ND iter, right? That is used for ND iterations, multi-dimension iterator to iterate over the arrays. So we use print, not print, first of all for x in np dot and the iter of a print x uh, spreading error so you can see now iterations with any number of dimensions we are having we are going to get the one 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 such the things over there respectively okay that working of an nd iterations so that's the thing working off uh, like with multi dimensions okay now so uh, like similar to this way like if you have a 2d array you want, you want to convert this into 1d not convert to print this as a 1d what you can use is like np dot ravel of a to get everything inside one dimension or np dot reshape so reshape of any negative number will turn any such things inside the uh, reshape of not np a see and moreover you can use one function that is called as flatten so flatten is something which returns a copy of an array collapsed in one dimension. Okay. There is one such option. One more is there. What is that? Ravel. Reshape. Flatten. Okay, fine, leave. So, uh, you have like these options to convert in one dimension from any much dimensions over there. Right, next we learn in mathematics that is something called as transpose. Right, so if you are having an array, let's say, Right, so two dimension array is this. Now, if I say to transpose this, uh, 
or let's go with a simple one that would work for that. B looks like 0, 1, 2, 3, right? If I say B dot T transpose 0, 2, 1, 3 or NP dot transpose of B 0, 2, 1, 3, okay? So that can be done with the transpose one, right? Easy. So that is one major thing for that transposing of the elements economy. And you can even go for finding the sine, square, roots, and all. Sine of any array. minus 1, 0 and 0, 1, square root of them, right, sorry, sine of them, square root can be easily find out, square root of b over there, right, so if I say c is equals to np dot full of four and nine. So 4 and 9 with the 2 plus 2, right? Now to find a square root of all. In the pandas you will learn this as apply. Something like apply. Then numpy we don't have apply. Okay, in the pandas we have this. Right, so sine, cos, tan, cotec, and all the things. Logarithmic, np dot log. Log ten. Simply log, right? So that is log ten with the, that is like log ten with the base of the ten. Okay. Right, so. Otherwise, if you want to find the LCM, easy. We want to find an LCM of a total array. So that means like you will have to convert that in like one such parameter which will come inside the list, right? Because so many times array are in the multi dimension, so you have to first convert it in one dimension. So reduce done uh, reduce uh, works a lot for all these things, right? It automatically converts up like a 2D, 3D or 4D or any dimension one inside one dimension to get you the results of an LCM. So like if it is an array, C. Also getting the results array of 4 and 9. Like if you have array over there. Results of an array, LCM of an array, 2, 4, 6, 8. 3, 4. Same you can go with the HCF or better known as GCD. Okay. Uh, 
four, right? So these can be the things to focus on, right? Next we'll see up tomorrow, right? So today, whatever the functions we need, lab, we'll have to focus on the things. Any doubts with any of the functions?